The empty chair technique of the therapy with energy and process by the Swiss psychologist Vivian Rauber de Coppe. It's the fourth self-help formation free. Here, lesson three with a demonstration of how to work with a relationship problem. It's the ideal technique because when you sit in the energy of the other person, you can really feel and think like the other one. So, Eugenia, is there a relationship problem you'd like to work on? I would like to, to work on the past problem um, with my ex-husband. Mm -hmm. If you could talk just a little louder, then yeah, I could hear I'll you try. better. Yeah. But remind me. So you'd yeah. like to work on the relationship problem you had with, with your... my ex-husband. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you want to tell us more about it or shall we just see what happens? Um, for me the most shocking thing was to see a personality change mm -hmm. so big that I couldn't recognize the person anymore. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. um, I was wondering during the last stage of our marriage, where is the person I met? Because there was none of him left. Mm -hmm. So I think that was the most shocking part mm -hmm. uh, for me, the most scary part. <laughs> and the interesting thing you told me is that this happened again later on. Right, something similar that reminded me of this, yeah happened uh, two years ago, well, a year and a half ago, yeah, um, at my workplace, where I also did not, could not recognize the person anymore. The behavior was different, the attitude was different, the character was different. Mm -hmm. The person was doing things that were not usual for mm -hmm. him. So something that keeps happening is always something very interesting. Why does that happen again right. to me? So I think it's great you want to work on it. Look, I've put another chair in front of you, mm -hmm. this other black chair. Could you turn round so as you can see this other chair? And now imagine your ex-husband is sitting on this chair. Can you see him? Yeah. How is he dressed? He's got a big coat on and a big winter jacket, kind of. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he looks negative. <laughs> he looks negative? Yeah. What? I don't know how one looks negative. Could you explain me his expression? like impatient, like what am I doing here and like, you know, very... Mm. I have asked you what he's dressed like, not because I'm interested in what he's dressed like, but to know whether you see him and that can... Yes. S and from what you say, you can see him, you can I even see... I have to move away because of this... I, you want negative, to move away? Yes, because of okay. this negative energy around. Okay, so move a little bit back. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you feel now that you f you see the, your ex-husband? Kind of nervous in a way, because I don't like even the feel of this energy. I don't like being close. Um, a bit nervous. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be here, you know, like, I don't want to be too close, and, mm -hmm. yeah. And this feeling of, I don't want to be so close, how could you give it some other names? Is that fear, anger, uh, sadness? I think... It's more like fear. It was um, uh, a 
at the very last stage of the marriage, it was a lot of even fear. I could sense this negative cloud. I could even sense it without seeing that he's coming towards me. I could feel this negative cloud of energy coming to me. Like, uh, you know, it's scary. It is fear, probably, mm -hmm. more closely. Yeah. yeah. Now that you see your ex, what's his name? You can give him another name if you want to. His name is Gideon. Hmm? Gideon. 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 So tell him how, the, how you feel, this feeling you have. Gideon, I feel... Gideon, I feel scared when you're so close to me. How does it make you feel to tell him you're scared? Yeah, strange. <laughs> strange? Yeah. How? Because I never um, could say that before. <laughs> you never could say that before. Yeah. Okay, so Eugenia, please stand up, get out of your energy, and go over to the seat of your ex I'm sorry I forgot your name what's your name? Gideon Did G Gideon Gideon yeah. Gideon did you hear what Eugenia said? yeah I heard what did she say? She said she was scared to be with me, which is preposterous. How does that make you feel? Angry. Oh, angry. angry. Makes you angry. Makes me angry, yes. Yeah. I don't see why she should feel scared. Mm. We stayed a long time together. We did... Um, Whatever was possible, it was fine, and now she tells me she's scared, and I don't see why. And that makes you angry? Yeah. Do you want to tell her, and do you want to ask her why she's scared? Yeah. yeah look at her, and say, Virginia. Uh, I think it's preposterous that you feel scared after all this time together. Why should you feel scared? I didn't quite hear everything. Uh, did you tell her how you feel, that you feel angry? That, uh, um, yes, in a way, yes. Mm -hmm. Could you re please repeat, because I didn't really pay it enough attention. Could you say again? Sure. What? Eugenia. I find it ridiculous mm -hmm. that you should feel scared of me now because we've been so long together. So what's your problem? And do you want to tell her how you feel? It makes me feel angry and sad. Angry and sad. Thank you. So please stand up and get out of your energy. And when you're ready, you sit again on the chair in the energy of Virginia. Virginia, did you hear what your ex-husband said? Yes. He always uses big words <laughs> and uh, he talks a lot sometimes. What did he say? He said he's angry and sad and can't understand. Something like this. He's angry and sad and can't understand. And did he ask you to explain it? Mm, kind of. But he never listened before. He never listened. Uh, you did tell him, but 
Mm. No, I didn't try to tell him I was scared because I thought that it would cause a big mm, performance again, you know. He would jump up and down and scream and that's why I didn't even tell him I felt scared. Mm -hmm. I just tried to limit my contact as much as possible. Is it okay to tell him now? This? Is yeah, it? just right now. Yeah. Look at him and tell him by name. Start saying his name. It hurts in my throat. <laughs> I beg your pardon? I, I can even feel like my throat is full of pain. Your throat is full of things. Of pain. just hurts. I feel like it's hard to say. It's hard to say, yeah. I'm just going to tell you, don't tell him. <laughs> He's not really here. Not, nothing will happen. <laughs> and I'm here in case he would jump up. <laughs> I'm here. Tell him directly. You would. You said he would. Tell him you would. I was scared because you, I thought you would, you yes. might. Yeah. Yes, I thought you, you might do the same as before, like uh, start a row at three o'clock in the morning or something like this, which was always very scary for me. That's why I didn't even tell you exactly my feelings, because first, it wouldn't bring anything, you wouldn't really listen to my side, but you would talk about how you felt about what I felt or what I said. It was always you, you, you. It was never, you never asked me, you wouldn't ask me, why did you feel scared? You would say, oh, that makes me so shocked and so sad and so angry. It was always your feelings that came there, at least in the final part of our relationship. You wouldn't, you wouldn't care how I felt, but you would make a whole row about how you felt about what I said. So I didn't bother saying things in the, in the end. That's why I had to leave. It was no use talking. It was no use trying to repair it, and I just left because of this. Virginia, did you know that feeling before that you said something and no one was interested in what you were saying and how you were feeling? Before the marriage? Yeah, maybe at home. Maybe at school sometimes. Hmm? Maybe at school sometimes. At school? Yes. At school? Yes. What happened at school? Um, we moved to a different place. Mm -hmm. And um, it was very different mentality in general. Um, I felt odd because I was also, I had excellent marks and it was easy for me to study and for all the people in the class it was like hmm, something must be wrong with her, she's got excellent marks. This is odd. <laughs> so I felt um, out of my place. I and so in the new place yeah. you went to, how old were you? I was 12. 12? Yeah. But they spoke with the same language? Of course, yes. yes. And with whom didn't you feel well, who could you take out of all these people? I think at first it was just most people, just 
generally. Mm -hmm. Then I start to connect with some. But for instance, in the old class, we were very together class, all together. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter girls or boys. Mm -hmm. In the new class, it was like a division that boys just wouldn't mix with girls and wouldn't talk to them. And mm -hmm. it was something very, very, um, you could sense this, you know, mm -hmm. this divide. And the girls were, were also dividing themselves into uh, this part and this part. They wouldn't talk to each other in the new class. And so um, at first they were like, oh, so you talk to her, so you should choose whom you talk to. Do you want to talk with us or do you want to talk with them? Like, no, I'm not interested in this. So, I, oh, can't, I, I can't single out one person. Mm -hmm. I cannot say with this person I had a particular problem. It was a whole attitude, mm -hmm. this kind of different mentality, mm -hmm. how things work. So, we could put a chair for different culture or for, how should we call it? I'll put the chair and we'll see who will sit on that. <laughs> okay. So, you see that chair and whom do you see sitting on it right now? Ah, I see my class um, form tutor, the teacher who used to look after us. You see your teacher? Yeah. Okay. How do you feel when you see your teacher? I always feel a bit um, like I have to stand back a bit and I can't talk about everything with her mm -hmm. because... Do you want to tell her? Yeah. What's her name? Olga Mikhailovna. So... Look at her, how is she dressed? Can I talk to her in Russian? Sure, I won't understand, you will have to translate yes. it. <laughs> okay. But for me it's so odd to talk to her Okay, <laughs> talk to her in Russian. Yes. Virginia, how do you feel now that you have told her all that? I feel like crying a little bit. Um, you feel like crying? Yeah. yeah. What did you tell her? I asked her for forgiveness first for what I'm about to say because maybe that's something that she never uh, would have guessed herself and uh, I said to her that before I couldn't fully express myself in her presence because because when I already arrived just when I first arrived, I really liked her and I still have a lot of respect for her and uh, she's a great teacher and great personality. But uh, when I first came, she seemed to know exactly what I am and what I'm like and what I feel and what I think and just put me in this box, which I wasn't. I wasn't in that box, maybe to some extent. She was right about me, but she seemed to she seemed to be interested in what she thought of me rather than what I was. So maybe sometimes she uh, like uh, when my friend, for instance, she left. She had to leave school, and I was very upset about it. And but when my teacher decided she had to talk to me about this. Um, she talked about different things that I didn't feel. I felt other things. But she was talking all the time. Maybe it was something that she was going through before, maybe. And she thought I would feel totally the same. But I didn't feel that. I felt very upset, but for slightly different reasons. And um, But she kept on talking and talking and talking and talking and was maybe uh, an hour talk, but I was crying because I was so upset. And she made me cry even more because she kind of digged into this, this whole situation, but still I didn't feel what she was talking about. 
You didn't feel understood? No. Okay. I didn't feel understood there. Do you want to tell her that? Would you like to tell her clearly that you didn't feel understood? Or what is the main thing that you would like to tell her? Yes, that uh, I didn't... I feel even now, I feel even sad that I didn't have this power before to tell her, no, sorry, can we... You know, it's not about me. Mm -hmm. I am something else and I have different feelings. I, no, I don't feel what you're talking to me about. Okay, so when you're ready, Eugenia, you get out, you stand up, you get out of your energy and you sit on the chair and the energy of your teacher. Teacher, did you hear what Eugenia said? Yes. What did you hear? because she never shared with me her real feelings about certain big things that happened in her life. Hmm. So how do you feel now that you have heard all that? It's kind of sad that I didn't realize it at the time. I wish I could have known better then. Teacher, would you like to tell Eugenia that? Teacher, I'm sorry, I don't speak Russian. Could you tell me what you sure. told her? Sure. Um, I said I'm sorry that there was this misunderstanding between us mm -hmm. uh, when she was my student. And I hope that this misunderstanding at least wasn't complete misunderstanding or wasn't there all the time. I hope that I could support her still. How does it feel to you to have told her that you're sorry? It reminds me of certain it's things that, that it's another case where there was a misunderstanding and about this case I didn't even know before. Mm -hmm. And now that you know it, how do you feel? And you said you were sorry. I feel sad about it. You feel sad. Do you want to tell Eugenia that? Yes. Мне действительно очень жаль, что я не могла тебя поддерживать настолько хорошо, насколько может было нужно. Teacher, how do you feel now that you have told Eugenia that? You feel good about it? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, teacher. So when you're ready, please stand up and get out of your energy. And when you're ready, sit, please, in the energy on the chair of Eugenia. Eugenia, did you hear what your teacher said? Yes. What did What did you hear? I heard that my teacher feels sad that. And how does that make you feel? I I feel happy that I could tell her, and I could apologize for not telling her before at school. Mm -hmm. I feel. Like it's a, some load off my mind, maybe. You feel how? Like it's re a relief. You know? A relief? Yeah. And the relief seems to be on your shoulder as your, <laughs> as your hands showed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or your throat. Yes, it's 
It's so strange that I, I feel like it's a whole knot in my throat. It's still there. It's less, but mm -hmm. it's still there, yes. Mm -hmm. Do you see your ex-husband? He's still sitting on this chair. How do you feel right now when you look at your ex-husband? Indifferent. It's not the fear anymore. No, it's not the fear. Before he asked you, why scared? You didn't tell me. And why are you scared? Do you want to tell him why you were scared? I felt even scared physically. Just worried. Tell him directly. Um, Say his name. Gideon, at a couple of times I was really scared that you might hit me, for instance, or you would do something to hurt me, physically even. And, um, and right now I would like you to listen and hear that. Now that you've told him, Eugenia, how do you feel? I think you should know. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it feels good. That's a that's a thinking and uh, how is your feeling now that he you told it? It feels good too. It feels good. How does your throat feel right now? A little better. Mm -hmm. There is still a little bit left. But there is still a little bit left? Yeah. Uh -huh. This little bit that is left, is left for whom? For your ex-husband or for someone else? So shall we leave this little bit and see next time what this little bit in the throat would like to do? Okay. Okay. Continue with the next lesson of the empty chair that you find through my webpage vivianraube.com English YouTube empty chair and you click on lesson 04.